Um, okay, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Bogdano and I'm here to, uh, together with Josef. Uh, we'll be talking about the L3 tools that are available for labs. Um, just for context, for those who are not familiar, the L3 team is focused on uh, providing an interface between customer support and the developers or software maintainers within SUSE. We also are responsible for preparing and delivering PTFs, both during the normal support phase and also for reactive products. Uh, and the objective today is mostly to review the tools because I assume most of the people uh, within SUSE there or within labs are familiar with the, the tools avail available from L3. And we'd, so I'd like to, would like to just quickly review. And one of the main reasons we are here is to get feedback and ideas for how to improve it. I'll cover L3 Mirror and, Fest and Festilla and Josef will cover L3 VM and Debug Info D. Okay, let's start with L3 Mule. L3 Mule is, uh, is the main machine for the L3 team for both uh, bug analysis and the preparation of PTFs. It's a pretty powerful machine and um, uh, it has uh, enough uh, capacity for analyzing crash dumps, um, uncompressing uh, data from customers and so on. We have from there access to customer artifacts. So by the way of uh, slash mounts, uh, Zio and uh, Concord, we, we can reach the data. Um, and we have yeah um, also the repository for the PTFs that are um, delivered to the customers. They are reachable there. Um, so as for information, if you need to access PTFs, you don't need to go to ptfsuzek.com and log in there. You can just log into this machine and access the RPMs there directly. Um, the four labs, uh, the, the main uh, or one of the most interesting reasons to use this machine is for crash, crash dump analysis, as I said. And um, this machine uh, is reachable to all R&D as long as you have VPN access. Um, and within labs, I think the 24 by seven uh, team or virtual team is the main user at the moment. Um, so from now on, I'll just point a couple of interesting or useful uh, applications or uh, services that are available in this machine. Um, and later, um, Joseph will describe more in detail what 3VM, which is, yeah. Uh, another part of the infrastructure. So we have, um, as part of the, the L3 work, we need to um, analyze uh, artifacts from bugs and from from um, Zio, which is which comes from the SUSE support center, customer center. And so we have uh, tools for accessing bugs, updating bugs, uh, downloading attachments, um, formatting bug output, like this uh, really um, dirt, dirty work of, of handling bugs. And yeah, the, the most useful thing uh, or tool for, at least for the scope of this presentation, I think is uh, Crash Setup, uh, which analyzes or gets the metadata from, from crash dumps and uh, goes to the repository, fetches uh, debug infos, kernel images, links them locally and makes them available um, for, so that you can run Crash. Um, and also for information, you don't need to, to know by, by heart any of these commands, but uh, we have tools for uh, accessing the PTFDB, which is the database that tracks uh, PTFs delivered to customers. So in case you want to know uh, what PTFs are delivered to a customer, what packages, what versions, um, what um, bugs or CVEs were addressed, we have tools to uh, access uh, this database there. It's reachable to anyone, uh, at least this part of the database is public. You can also check the maintenance status of PTFs. Um, also on the scope of L3 is uh, Festilla is maintained by, uh, by us or mostly by Alish. Uh, and it's a very fast uh, full text search of Bugzilla. Uh, I think it's very popular. So yeah, no need to provide more details. With that, I would like to hand over to Josef to cover L3 VM. Yeah. 
Uh, 3 team uh, needs a lot of virtual machines for testing and usually uh, unlike is uh, common in cloud uh, environment we need them uh, fully installed and fully updated to the latest this update is and we need them quickly and uh, easy to maintain and easy to use so uh, we develop our own uh, system for uh, preparing virtual machines and it's called l3vm it's based on uh, Libvirt, Quemu, and LVM. And the uh, main idea is that we maintain a set of so called templates, which are regular uh, virtual machines. However, uh, they uh, they have their disk on LVM. Uh, for every service pack uh, we are supporting, uh, we have one template. And when someone needs a uh, virtual machine for the testing, uh, we just uh, are creating clones from them. Usually, we are copying the XML definition with few changes. And uh, then we are doing the LVM snapshot, our uh, read and write snapshot from the disk. So in a few seconds, we have new virtual machines can, uh, that can be started. Uh, the L3VM script just uh, waits until the machine is up and then call SSH uh, to make uh, final changes like uh, SCC registration and changing things like uh, machine ID. Here is an example. Uh, it's a command line script, so uh, you can just uh, write a 3 vm clone. Uh, the first argument is the name of the template. Second argument is uh, your new name. It should start with the username. The third argument is for optional, just some kind of description. Uh, on the last line, you will get uh, the DHCP name of the, of the machine, and uh, you can log in uh, to uh, SSH, or of course, uh, because it's a regular machine, uh, you can also use uh, Spice to get a graphical interface or uh, use another tools like uh, Word Manager. The cloning uh, is, uh, is pretty fast for uh, distributions like Leap. Uh, we uh, have a new machine in 30 seconds, including the boot. Uh, for SLE 15 SP5, uh, it's done in 90 seconds because uh, it needs registration and we are registering all available channels because it's convenient. Uh, the templates have already uh, pre-installed uh, authentication uh, authorized keys for uh, SSH public authentication, so all the clones can be accessed uh, without uh, using password directly uh, using SSH. Uh, there is a simple version of uh, reservation system just to detect uh, all the virtual machines that are not used anymore. Uh, we are giving usually at least a month to every virtual machine bef uh, before it's uh, considered abandoned, but you can uh, extend the reservation if you wish. Uh, there is very simple disk management that uh, allows to uh, create new disk, attach it to the machine. Currently, we have two hosts uh, where is uh, the L3VM script uh, set up. L3VM SUSE CZ, which is the new one, and the old one is Polio that works since 2015, which is <laughs> outdated a bit. Uh, only thing you need to use that is LDAP SUSE CZ account which is provided by infra team to service desk ticket. The second tool I'm maintaining is debug info D because uh, we are uh, handling the core uh, from uh, crashed application provided by customers. We have also to get uh, corresponding resources for debugging, which means to get executable, debug info and debug source in proper versions, which is not always such easy. Therefore, uh, I like the upstream project uh, from uh, Elf Utils, which is called Debug Info D. Uh, that's a server that provides those debugging artifacts uh, over HTTP uh, just by the built ID. Built ID is some identifier uh, built in every binary, every library, and uh, it's stored in core file, so we can identify exactly which uh, binaries were involved in the core file and use through them, get all the informations. The client side support is uh, already implemented in many tools like Airfutils, GDB, Wallgrind, and many others. It's still not perfect and uh, buggy in many ways. However, it's uh, very important to update your tools to new versions because uh, they, uh, the limitations are quickly fixed. Uh, the advantage of that is that uh, the system is uh, 
cross architecture distro independent. You can uh, open on your Tumblr v desktop, you can open uh, a core from 12 SP3, uh, I don't know, uh, S390 architecture, and it will download all the resources for you without need any root permission because everything is uh, done only on user privileges without installing any, any RPM. Uh, I set up uh, our internal debug info resus CZ server, uh, which is available on this address on port uh, 8002. Um, it's scanning our internal repositories uh, with RPMs and also uh, PTF archives. So it's all able uh, to open even cores that uh, includes some PTFs, which are usually hard to find. Uh, you can just uh, export this variable uh, here uh, to enable that functionality in tools that support the uh, backend for D. And on L3 Mool server, which was mentioned above, uh, uh, it's already uh, defined in an environment. The uh, backend for D is not working perfectly yet. Uh, however, uh, there are a few tricks you can use to make it better. For example, you can drop a local cache because uh, sometimes uh, when you are changing the URLs, uh, it, uh, uh, it uh, maintains also zero length files as a negative cache. So when you are changing the uh, URLs, it's important to uh, drop them. Otherwise, uh, it will not try uh, again to download uh, with the changed URL. Uh, with, if everything's fine, uh, you would, should be able to open the core just by calling gdb-c and name of core and everything else should be downloaded. Uh, <laughs> if it doesn't, uh, you can help it uh, a bit. For example, uh, some times ago I wrote a very simple bash script that just uh, downloads the artifacts in advance and put them uh, to a directory and makes uh, symlinks according to SO names to the, of the libraries and uh, prepares a uh, any file for GDB uh, with sysroot. Uh, so GDB uh, somehow uh, has better uh, better chance to open the core than when it's called directly. I don't know, because usually GDB tends to look at local files in your local root file system and mess with uh, your core. And here are a list of basic documentation to our tools, because of course they are well documented. And now it's time for questions. Can you just go back to the previous slides so we can look at those docs? Yeah, if you um, if, if you go to PS Suzy D, uh, it's, uh, it's it's right on the home page. So yeah. No questions. Tiny question that the debug info D is awesome system, but it uh, it's uh, shut down. The debug info D open source dot arc. So uh, when it will be back? Uh, sorry, I'm not responsible for that server. Yeah, it, it's now the turned off because uh, it had uh, it wasn't maintained for some time, so it wasn't a dangerous a bit. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I would just like to mention that I really like your GitHub account, the name. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I just wanted to ask, like, what is your experience uh, using this on other architectures that uh, x8664? Uh, because, for example, I have some uh, really not so good experiences uh, debugging something on S390. Like, uh, for example, if you want to open the kernel core dump uh, in, in crash, you need to have like a crash from that architecture. 
Uh, I heard about that new new debugger called Dragon that is actually um, well, you can open on a core file on other architectures as well. Uh, but even for user space debugging, you know, the debug info D did not kind of pull everything. And uh, what could I possibly like uh, uh, do to debug debug info D? You know, or what could I do if I find out something doesn't work? Uh, well, that's not problem of debug info D. <laughs> The backend for the doesn't care about architecture. It just provides artifacts uh, uh, by the built ID. So it doesn't care about it. It's uh, the issue of the tools that are using it. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I had problems with at S390 cores uh, from user space because uh, GDB tends to uh, take uh, binaries from local system uh, from different architecture. Uh, even if the artifacts were available on the backend for the, but that's not problem of the backend for the, but uh, from the uh, integration to GDB, which sadly it's not perfect. So uh, that's uh, why I wrote that script because that script uh, makes a working directory and uh, sets a sysroot of GDB to that directory. So uh, it limits the mess with local file system and uh, it's able then open uh, even S390 cores. With, uh, with the kernel, I don't, I don't have to experience, but uh, I assume it's similar, similar issue because uh, the integration into many tools is still fragile. Um, yeah, dumped question, but like, um, does uh, the L3VM have access to the internal network, so um, GitLab and stuff like that? I'm just considering it for my use cases. Um. Uh, yeah, it uh, it has access, and we even uh, are using uh, virtual machines from L3VM for testing our PTFs. We have a uh, GitLab runner. Uh, configured so uh, we, uh, when we are building a PTF, the PTF uh, is tested uh, through the GitLab runner or uh, on a virtual machine created just uh, for this purpose on L3VM. If not, um, uh, then we need to talk. Uh, it, it's very common that we have uh, a few corner cases where the firewall is blocking. So uh, depends on what you're reaching is, is yeah. The, uh, uh, we need to, to see the traffic and, and see where, where it's going. Then uh, we talk with uh, Infra, yeah, about it. Oh, yeah, uh, actually that uh, reminds me that um, if someone has some use for GitLab runners on L3VM, like testing mini kernels with one push or something like that, um, uh, Petr Pavlou uh, worked on a driver uh, for, for GitLab re um, some time ago, and uh, I think this can be adapted for not only for testing PTFs or testing anything. Yeah, so if you have an idea, yeah, just ping us. Do you have automated tools for creating Windows VMs? Since I know you sometimes have to do that. Sorry. For Windows VMs, when you're doing L3 for Samba, you need Windows VMs. Do you have any tool, tools for doing that? Okay. Uh, I was I was uh, uh, thinking about that. Uh, however, I'm not familiar with Windows enough, and uh, I don't know how works the license uh, problematic and uh, whether it's possible to clone uh, already installed Windows and how it works. So. It, it could be nice, however, uh, I assume that it would be better to run just some instances of Windows uh, to test, uh, for example, Active Directory against that than uh, cloning the Windows itself. Uh, in the same vein, I wanted to ask, why did you not use a tool which exists like Vagrant for stuff like this, like running v VMs with Flipboard? Why did you write your own? Was there something missing there? 
the system was written before those tools were mature enough. It's it's it was developed in 2015, and since then we just improving that and uh, the tool itself is very very easy and very simple. So yeah, we can we can uh, integrate in many other tools like sort on uh, another things into that, but. Uh, yeah. Okay. It it does the job we need, and okay. of course it can be extended. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Just uh, uh, again, I also don't like Windows much, but uh, we actually have it in OpenQA, uh, and uh, we solved somehow the problem with the licensing, and also the installation of it is automated. So it, it's not my work, but uh, a colleague of mine did it. So if you needs to automate that, maybe ping us and we can somehow share the knowledge. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I, I suppose you've set up crash for, uh, sorry, crash set up for crash uh, as such, but have you used other tools like Dragon or Crash Python? And uh, because I know there is one requirement for Dragon to be put in at least one of the sleek systems. So if, uh, it is integrated with Dragon, I think it will be much more better. I think uh, for, I think Alice can, can help, right? Uh, <laughs> well, well crash it up is just to, to give you the, the debug info and, uh, and the image. So wh whatever you run it, you, you run with it, uh, it's, it's up to. I don't recall whether we currently have crash, uh, crash Python or or Dragon installed? No, Dragon, Dragon, I don't think so. I think it was in the past, but perhaps the, that was the old machine. Yeah, I think it, if I, it was, it was if, lost if, already. If SLE meets the dependencies needed, we can install it if there, if there is an interest. That would be nice for, because it gives you much more information than for crashing. But, yeah. OK, then just, mm -hmm. yep, we can, we can decide, uh, agree on that. Yeah. Also, uh, this infra is all on salt. Um, so if you if you want to propose a change, actually just send a merge request or yeah uh, to the L three uh, dash salt in GitLab. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, I have a general question about L three. As a package maintainer, I have the feeling that L3 somehow expects that we redo the work. So the last cases I had, the L3 engineer created an L3 and Bugzilla had a number, but I don't know what to do with this number actually, and attached the patches to Bugzilla. So I was wondering uh, whether L3 could just submit the maintenance update. Like you can add me as reviewer, as packager, and then your package is hopefully good because you're just as competent as I am. So I can just say, yes, that's fine. And it goes through maintenance. It actually doesn't need to go through Bugzilla and through my hands again. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, for the usual workflow of L3, we, uh, yeah, um, this, we, we usually don't reach this point where the, everything is ready from the L3 point of view. And I think because of the need of always having the review of the maintainer, we, yeah, I don't know. We yeah, it is, it is required. Uh, we have to. We can provide only test uh, packages without, without uh, uh, the uh, agreement uh, yeah. of the maintainer. And uh, when it is working, then uh, we need uh, approval from maintainer uh, to provide a fully supported uh, PTF because a fully supported PTF is from our side some commitment that the changes will be uh, included in future maintenance updates. So uh, maintainer mu uh, must agree with that uh, changes. Yeah, um, I mean, it ma makes sense. I think it's a, it's a nice suggestion that we should explore. Uh, we may want to have some uh, evidence of that in, in Bugzilla, um, of that approval. But uh, yeah, it makes sense. Um, why not? I think, I think it's a good idea. And I think you don't even need it in Bugzilla direct. I mean, you could have it in Bugzilla, but OBS would even do it for you. Because in theory, the maintainer can be the reviewer on the submit request you do in RBS. And then the maintainer has to click accept in, mm -hmm. in RBS and then you get the approval. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to also have it in Bugzilla, then of course a bot could do that for you. Or then that would save some steps. As for me as maintainer, it's kind of annoying that I just have to 
grab your package, mangle the changelog again to remove these mm -hmm. PDF IDs and then submit it like busy work. How often do you notice that? Or? Uh, not that often. I have crude packages that uh, are super stable in Slee, of course, mm -hmm. so they <laughs> never need any maintenance updates except when L3 has fixes. So, mm -hmm. and I, okay. I think I noticed two times this year, but it's not happening often. But mm -hmm. when it happens, I just don't want to have any business with that. Just <laughs> give me a button that I can click and uh, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> a, yeah that, that's a good uh, point that where L3 is a bit disconnected from the maintenance workflow and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So actually, actually, I raised this point around four or five years back because most of the maintainers are repeating the same steps which the L3 have already done. So if we could just cut down those steps and, and just the L3 does it and maintainer says, okay, this is good, this would cut down the workflow and save our time quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So yes, probably there would be some sort of an approval in between, but if it is just saying or just a command saying that this is good probably it'll save a, saves the maintainers a lot of steps that's all yeah i think uh, the challenge to that or i mean the, the this suggestion is, is is totally fine i think to to introduce to the l3 team or or uh, have an effort to have more of that but the problem is the generalism of the l3 agents and um, each package may have some particular uh, some some special way of being handled and the maintainer might, um, there might, uh, the Dell 3 agent might not be familiar with the package, but it's it's just a concern in general. It's it's a it's a very good idea, I think. Do you have any uh, concerns, comments on that, Alish? Well, obviously many concerns, <laughs> most of, of which you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, every package, unfortunately, seems to have a bit different way of. Yeah, but, but then, then it would be... Well, actually, actually, kernel is the easier part, uh, which we already do. So right. if we if we have a patch which yeah. we had to use in Git anyway, we we can we we already send it to to for next. So that's the easier part. Uh, harder are those packages with individual uh, ways of handling. Yeah, it's certainly it's it's a change of a process which has been stable for for many years. Uh, so we should think carefully about it. But um, I would definitely be for it if it saves someone's time, I think it, it would be good for us mm -hmm. as well, but we need to, to take this mm, to a different channel first. Okay, I think we have time for one or two more questions, yeah. Can I think just the opposite of the R3 uh, problems? It happens to me quite often that uh, some Python package gets uh, R3 Somebody uh, applies patch from upstream, sends PTF out before I even recognize that something is going on. They are nice, quick, fast, but then I'm like, I thought that I would resolve it somehow different or there is a reason why I haven't applied this patch or something. And so could be there some like feedback before you send PTF that I, I should know that uh, you made a change to my package or something. I didn't. That workflow is kind of weird. Well, process-wise, uh, that shouldn't happen. Yeah, that, that shouldn't happen. Maybe we should also distinguish between test packages uh, and PTFs, uh, because as as Bogdan mentioned, PTF or yes, uh, PTF really means a commitment that this is what we want to to push to maintenance, which which basically we expect you to push into maintenance. Would be exact. So uh, we we won't we should not be doing that. Uh, before having maintainers uh, acknowledgement. I, I was the gentleman who made the email. To okay, okay, great. That that would certainly help. In, any more? Uh, mm -hmm. Based on already more than 10 minutes of our time to this day. Okay, then uh, thank, thanks a lot um, for, for watching and yeah. See you around the conference. Thanks.